What, babe? No, you can do it. I got my camera on. Hello. Today is Tuesday, November 1st. And I decided to do a vlog today instead of trying to write out about the Screaming Pumpkin, which I was going to tell you about. Because I feel like, I think I do, maybe I don't, take too long when it comes to blogging. I don't know if that's because, um, I don't know if that's because I obsess too much and want it too perfect, so I take too long, or maybe I'm just not as good of a writer as I think I am or want to be. I don't know. I used to call myself a writer back in the day, but, um, of a box full of stuff from my writing days and aspired to be a writer, wanted to be a journalist like my aunt. Um, but I don't know what happened. I don't know. But, you know, I didn't write anything that, you know, won me a Nobel Peace Prize. Maybe that's not what wins writing. I don't know. What's the top writing honor? I guess books get that, don't they? I don't know. Rabbit trail. Hello. Wake up. I've been up since 4 a.m. And my mind is starting to wander. It's just that time of the morning. And I'm going to try and talk to you. So anyways, long story short, it probably takes you longer to watch my video than to read my writing. But on the flip side of that, it takes longer for me to write than it would be to me to just make you a video. So here we go. Okay. On Friday, I ran the Screaming Pumpkin. I told you about that in my last post. And so that was really fun. We had two teams go up and then I did the individual, which by the way, do you like my jacket? It's my Screamin' Pumpkin jacket. It's a Mizuno Thermo Breathe, which I know doesn't mean hardly anything to most of you, but that means it's awesome, wicked sweet. So I got it for signing up for the marathon. And I've been wearing it nonstop because it keeps me really warm and I just think it's cool. <laughs> That's kind of why I wanted to do the individual. I mean, normally I'm not quite that, mm, I don't know if shallow is the word, but when I saw the jacket, this is what, when you sign up for races and you get stuff, like in your goodie bag, that's called the swag, like the shirt, and in this case, the jacket, that's your swag. So when I saw the swag for this race, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do that. I have got to sign up for that race just so I can get this jacket because it's really, really cool. So, um, I've been wearing it nonstop. And so we went down and had a lot of fun. And I dressed up as a Christmas tree. I will, I will just list the pictures. I won't like give you captions for the pictures or whatever. I will list the pictures. And I, didn't, I don't even know how I came up with this idea. Honestly, I don't even remember my moment of inspiration. I just know that I knew, I knew in advance, I did this race last year. So I knew in advance that they have a a costume contest and I had actually thought it would be funny to dress up as a clock because they don't allow watches and clocks and timing devices on the course or at all during the race so I thought wouldn't it be funny if I dress up as this really big clock and and ask the race director am I allowed to go out on the course because you said no watches or clocks on the course ha <laughs> ha get it anyway so that was my plan for most of the year I've been playing that since last year and but for whatever reason I don't remember what I got motivated, I got inspired, I was like, I'm gonna win this this year. I'm gonna win that costume contest. I don't care what it takes, I'm gonna do it. If it's something wild and crazy, then I will do it because that's, I'm, I'm willing to do that. So for whatever reason, uh, a Christmas tree popped into my mind. And I'm like, I will be a Christmas tree because it's something crazy and it's noticeable. I mean, everybody is dressing up and I mean, I guess not everything about Halloween is scary, but you see those typical costumes and whatnot. But, and there were a lot of really good costumes. I mean, give props to people out there. They really come up with some really, really neat stuff. But I knew that mine had to be something special and stand out and whatever. So I came up with this idea to be a Christmas tree and um, started making it. I actually didn't even start making my costume until Thursday, the day before, right? Yes, Thursday, the day before. So it was just kind of this vision that I had and went to the store. I actually didn't have enough fabric to begin with, so I had to go buy even more. I ended up having to buy about 15 yards of 17, well, I'm so close to that, yards of fabric of this tool. And um, like this, this was my shiny 
my shiny, not my shiny, but my, uh, it's kind of see-through and greenish, but it's got the sparklies on it because I wanted to convey the, the shininess of a Christmas tree. So, and I also got Christmas tree, well, not Christmas tree lights. They're more like little craft lights. I don't know. Um, they were good at first. They were kind of they were kind of cheap I and mean, they didn't cost that much but it kind of showed and I did I forgot to pack extra batteries because when I wore it during the race um, I was only lit for about the first loop and a half and then my batteries died and I forgot to bring more and so I wasn't quite the lit up Christmas tree that by then everybody already knew what I was anyways anyways don't make out of the game so I had to all this material I made three layers of this and then I just had that green netting tool that I also had three layers of that and uh, I had kind of practiced. I had made it so that on Thursday, uh, the kids at the elementary school, they had their class party. So um, I wore it to that. Um, but I, that's good because I was able to tweak it a little bit. Because um, initially I had the star mounted on my head. I'll post that picture too from when I wore it to the class party. Um, I had the star mounted on my head. And after being, after wearing it for like an hour, it gave me such a headache. I'm like, I can't do this. I, I don't know how I'm going to run like this. So um, I was able to tweak it a little bit. And then, um, but I also made the mistake of, I didn't actually try and run in it. I just did it up. And then when I went to go run, number one, I had this great, great idea that I was going to have presents under the tree. So I was going to wrap these boxes around my leg and I was going to run that way, which is really good in theory. And maybe if I was standing still or walking, it wouldn't have been so bad, but I went to <laughs> I went to these great legs to get these boxes to fit around my leg and I wrapped them in wrapping paper and everything else and when I finally started the race I got I don't know 200 yards and I was running so funky and so funny that I said this is not gonna work so I had my friends rip the box off my leg because if I re actually ran that way even if I had only done one loop I probably would have seriously injured myself if I didn't actually trip and fall I would just from running so weird from wearing the boxes and so um so the Chris the, the presents under the tree didn't work out but then also like when I put my ornaments on again not really thinking this all the way through um I just kind of tied them on myself I didn't have anyone to help me at the time so I just had them all tied on some of them were too loose some of them were all clanging together and I started running with the star I didn't mount it on my head but I had the star and uh but once I got going I was like a mess <laughs> I'm like things were clanging things were getting all tangled up my star it didn't stay mounted on the stick that it was on it kept coming apart and so then I had it hooked on my I was carrying the star hooked on my pinky and then my pinky would hurt and I did carry one of my present boxes underneath my arm for the first loop but I that first loop I mean I, I, I did pretty good on time and everything considering but I kept like adjusting I kept trying to like grab this ornament one of my ornaments fell off and good idea yes and no I don't know I took actual ornaments that we use on our Christmas tree and I don't buy ornaments I the only ornaments I have are ones that we have gotten throughout the years and I have I should have grabbed them but I won't I won't get up but I have ornaments that that my mom made when I was a little girl and I tied some of those on me I had the ornament that fell off was the very first ornament that Jim and I got for our very first Christmas together and so but luckily anytime as far as I know anytime an ornament fell off I heard it clink on the ground. So I knew to stop and seize that ornament. And part of me was thinking, what was I thinking? What was I thinking bringing out some of these ornaments knowing that they could potentially get lost? So some of them wouldn't be the end of the world. I mean, there's a little bit of history behind it, but it wouldn't be the end of the world if I had lost it. But I was a tangled mess, basically. And I was trying to move this ornament and that ornament. And my star was killing me. And I tried stocking it, putting it in my stocking. I had a stocking tied to me, my mom's stocking wasn't the greatest idea I should have tried to running in at first but I made it through the first loop okay it's you go out four times it's the same loop it's through a cemetery it's the same loop and I made it through the first loop and by then I ditched the present um, that I had been carrying in my arm that wasn't too bad but I could tell where I was being more tense and that it was really getting tight up in here so I ditched that I ditched the star my lights 
Um, had been all tangled up, but at least my friends helped me get my likes a little bit better, even though they ended up fading out and not lasting the whole race. But um, so, but I fin I did finish running the race. So it's a really hilly race. Uh, it's dark, but I've done this race before, so I'm a little familiar with the uh, with the course. So that that helps when you know kind of know where you're going, even though it's dark. And I had lot, lots of lights on, even if it wasn't my Christmas lights. I had my headlamp on. I had a light on my foot that was really bright. So, but my knee started to bother me really, really bad, and um, I don't know. It was tempting to, I was tempting to not finish the race because, because it's four loops, um, it would easy just, I don't know, there's no penalty for not finishing. You still get, you still get the, the prize for finishing whatever. I, I, I'm sure I possibly... Could have still won the costume contest. I was there. I was visible. Oh, and what was really great is that everybody but my costume, everybody knew what I was. Everybody that saw me, even at the school party, as soon as everybody saw me, everybody was like, oh, look, you're a Christmas tree. And I'm like, yay. Everybody got what I was trying to convey. And that was one of my concerns was like, is anybody going to get this? Um, but everybody got it. And everybody, when I was running through the course, everybody was like, oh, look, it's a Christmas tree. Oh, good idea. Oh, that's so neat. And then later on, I heard some people like, oh, that's really going to, that's totally going to win the costume contest and blah, blah, whatever. So I was super excited. But, um... And then everybody out there was just calling me Christmas tree because nobody, I mean, I had friends out there running, but for the most part, I didn't really know anybody there. I actually found out there was somebody there, but I never saw him. Not once. Maybe he saw me and didn't know it was me, but I found out that he did run that race on Friday night, but I never saw him. It was dark. But, um, but people were like, good job, Christmas tree. Keep going, Christmas trees. Everybody kept calling me Christmas tree all throughout the night on the course, and so that was pretty cool. And, um, so what was I saying? I don't know. I totally forgot. <laughs> I didn't even, oh, I should have got my timer. Yikes. Okay. Um, so when I got done with my third loop, I mean, my leg was killing me. My knee. Not in its normal spot. I mean, I tend to have a little knee problem anyways, but it's always on the inside of my knee. This was my outside of me. I don't know what it was. Other than it just was the hills. I'm not a fan of hills. I mean, I'll do them. I know they're good for my training. But this is a lot of hills. And because it's the same loop four times over, I kept having to do the same thing over. And um, so when I finished my third loop, my friend said, are you done? And I was like, no. I mean, I wanted to be. My leg was killing me. No one said I had to finish. There's no penalty for not finishing. But um, I can't, though. I just, when I know that that's what I want to do, you know, obviously, if I had, had like a broken leg or was passing out or something, obviously, okay, then I can't finish. But, oh, let's see. I saw this saying, and it said, I don't, I don't finish. It was talking about running. I don't finish when I'm tired. I finish when I'm done. Something like that. I don't know. I need to look it up again because it was really neat. It kind of inspired me. But, like, that's very true of me. If I know I'm going to do four miles and I go out on, on a loop or whatever to do four miles and I get one mile in, it's too late. I, I already mentally said I was going to do four miles, so I will go do four miles. It may be a very crappy four miles. It might be slow and it might just be one of my worst runs ever, but I have a hard time just going a little bit and saying, oh, you know what? It's just not going to work. Oh, you know what? I'm just too sick. Oh, you know what? I'll never last. I just go. So knowing that I had signed up to do a marathon and I said I was going to do a marathon, I had to do it, even though it was tempting. And it was also tempting. I'll just be honest. Um, because out on the course, there are certain places where it'll veer off one way, but coming from the opposite direction, it's like an intersection. And I will be honest, there were a few times on that last loop that I like like looked behind me to see if anybody was there. And I seriously contemplated, I was like, I wonder if anybody would notice if I just jumped over <laughs> and like totally skipped that whole loop out there. Is anybody gonna see me? No one's gonna know the difference. But again, my conscious says, no, you can't do that. Probably because I'm like, no, because somebody will see me and then they're gonna call me on it and then I'm gonna be totally embarrassed because they caught me cheating. So, um, yeah. I do, I am tempted, and maybe the right things don't motivate me, but I did do the right thing in this particular case. I didn't want to get caught. 
And I wanted to be honestly be able to look you guys in the eye and say, yes, I did run a full marathon dressed as a Christmas tree. So I, I finished. Um, now the goal of the, the main goal of the race is to finish before midnight. Now there's, there's some confusion because they announced we're supposed to start at six o'clock and they announced, um, okay, we're starting the race late because, um, there's a long line at check-in and we're just going to delay by 15 minutes to get everyone a chance to check in. So later on, so the gun didn't go off to like 615 and that's when I started. And the, um, later on, some of my friends went up to the, to the race director and was like, so you started 15 minutes late. We're going to get 15 minutes on the end. Right. And he's like, oh no. He said that was only for the 10 K. That's in the marathon. People could have started at six o'clock. We, and so yeah, we were, we were not happy. We're like, uh, excuse me. No, you did not say that. Actually, I wasn't there. I wasn't there when they talked to the race director. They just told me about it later on. But if he had so been there, I would have been like, uh, uh, you did not say you did not make it clear. You just said we're delaying by 15 minutes. And so if you give us six hours, you have from six until midnight, and the goal is to be the closest person to midnight, six hours. If you delay by 15 minutes and you did not say anything about 10K only, then we should have until 12.15. It's like, no, no, no. It's still the closest person to midnight. So that kind of affected things a little bit. And which, anyway, I was there to have fun anyways. I would run a loop and then after my first loop, I spent 15 minutes trying to fix my costume and get more comfortable to finish running. Um, after the second loop, I stopped. I got a hot dog to eat and my friend had a baby. So I was talking to my other friend because she got the text about it. And so, so I didn't really take the full marathon time necessarily seriously all I cared about was getting it done in six hours that, that's all I cared about um so I technically I finished at 1204 according to their time I finished at 1204 and so I didn't make them the midnight cut off but and technically if you finish after midnight you're supposed to get a pumpkin if you finish before midnight you're supposed to get one of these and a wand I have my wand somewhere I don't know but you know what when I finished I was just so done. I was so out of it. And I told my friends, I said, you go get me a crown. Because I finished this in under six hours. And they didn't say anything about the marathons being able to start at six o'clock. So as far as I know, I finished under six hours. I get a crown. So I got myself a crown. I didn't care about no stinking pumpkin. And I was only four minutes late. That's pretty awesome. Considering I was dressed as a Christmas tree. So as soon as I finished, they... Uh, they were announcing the costume contest and like thank you Joanne I just got to give a big shout out to my friend Joanne because as soon as I hit that finish line I could hear Joanne screaming there's a Christmas tree there she is there she is and so they pull me up on the stage and she told me later on she says they were trying to give the costume prize to somebody else because you had to be present to win and they tried to give it to somebody else, and she was totally cheering for me. And earlier in the evening, she would saw the race director, and she was like, did you see that Christmas tree? It's totally cool. So she, like, planted the seed in his mind for me. And um, she pu they pulled me up on the stage, and I won. Best costume! So, which, yay, I got a $150 gift card to Running Central. Super excited. But, um, and that's nice on a... On a financial, practical standpoint, $150 is a lot of money in a running store. I mean, I told Jim, I said, you know, I have to buy your running shoes the next time I need them because I will just go up there and get them. And um, But it's also just kind of cool because I, I worked really hard. Well, actually, it didn't take a lot of work to get the costume done, but I put a lot of thought, a lot of energy into my costume, and um, and it just it just paid off. And I'm just I can proudly say that I yeah I did run the whole marathon in that Christmas tree costume. And the race director asked if we were ready back next year, and I said yes. I said next year I'll be the Easter Bunny. So I have a year to come up with this grand Easter Bunny costume. <laughs> I don't know if I win or not. I don't know. That's okay to me. I've already won once, so I'm very happy with, about that. And so. If I don't ever win again, that's okay. I'll still dress up. I dressed up last year. That's part of the fun of doing it is dressing up and going up and having fun and um, just, I don't know. And I don't know if I'll do the marathon again next year. I might do it again as a team. That's what I did last year is I did it as a team. I might do that again next year. I don't know. 
know, it's a year from now, we'll have to see, but okay, I am sure my video is way too long, and I need to get a lot of cleaning done, and laundry, and while this, but the good thing is I can get all that done while this is uploading, and then I just gotta slap it on my blog, and there y'all go, so, um, yeah, have a good day, and I will talk to you later, bye.